The internet is outraged with swelt runes. Just take a look at some of these comments. But is it justifiable? First of all, what are these runes anyways? Swelt runes are function syntaxes that are used when working with reactivity. It aims to separate the drawbacks of let, equal, export, and the dollar sign symbol as the complexity of your application grows. The first rune is a state rune that is used to declare whether something is reactive. In this example, we can turn count from a regular variable to a reactive variable by using the dollar sign state syntax and we can pass it a default starting value. At this point, you might wonder, how is this better than how it was done before when it was automatically determined? Well, this rune aims to solve a couple of confusions with automatic reactivity as your application grows by essentially helping you identify which variable are reactive and which are not. When using this dollar sign state rune, you are now being more intentional and explicit when you want something to be reactive. Another thing that the state rune aims to solve is reusability. Previously, if you have multiple components that share the same logic, you would either have to duplicate them or move them to a Swelt native store implementation. But that might not make sense in some situation because Take a look at our example, we just want the logic for count to be the same, but we don't actually want the value of count to be shared between these two components. With the state rule, we can easily extract out the logic into a separate file that any other components can import. Here, we have a simple create counter function that returns the value of count and increment the value of count when called. Notice the get when returning count. This get syntax essentially binds an object property to a function that will be called when the property is looked up. If you don't use the get syntax here, the value of count will be whatever it was before the update. By using the get, it ensures that we always return the latest value. The next rune is the props rune that will replace the export let. It allows you to access props that were passed from the parent class. Here we have a simple parent component that just renders the rectangle component by passing in the width, the height, and whatever other properties are. In the rectangle component, we can extract those properties using the dollar sign props rune using the same JavaScript destructuring syntax. For you TypeScript folks, this will make your life a lot easier since you can define the type argument like such. I personally like this approach better since exporting a variable to declare a property was kind of weird. The next rune is derive, which aims to replace swelt compile time reactivity to instead determine the dependencies when the expression is evaluated. Let's see why this is needed using swelt current implementation with the dollar sign syntax. Again, here we have a simple parent class that renders a rectangle component. In our rectangle component, we have a reactive variable for determining the area whenever the value of width or height changes, when it should recalculate and what dependencies are needed or determined during compilation time. Now, if you were to refactor the code to something like this where we perform the area calculation in a different function that only takes in width, the dollar sign declaration will only consider width and will not take height into consideration. As a result, it makes it very hard to understand complicated code if it involves many more variables. With the derive rune, the dependencies are determined when the expressions are evaluated. We declare this using the dollar sign derive and pass in the expression. Even if you were to move the expression into a different functions that only accepts the width, Swell will still take height into consideration. The best part is that we can move all these logic into a JavaScript file for reusability. The effect rune is essentially used to replace the onmount and after update. It is used to run code whenever reactivity changes, whether it be state, props, or derived expressions. Using our previous example, as we've seen earlier, whenever the value of width or height changes, it will trigger a recalculation. We can use the effect rune to run additional code in response to that change. Let's update the width and you should see it console log the following message. The reason why it's not console locking anything is actually because inside the effect, we actually need to include a reference to the reactive variables that we're trying to run. If we were to console lock area, you can now see that it will start console locking correctly. With effect rune, you can provide an additional callback that gets run immediately before the effect gets rerun or when the component is destroyed. If I delete this component and add it back, you can see that the callback will not run the first time. But if you were to update the width value, you can see now it takes into effect and the callback code will get run. Likewise, when we delete this component, the callback code will be called. 
Overall, I think that these changes coming to Swelt 5 are going to be a game changer. It's going to be getting rid of a lot of weird behaviors that Swelt previously introduced, as well as remove any awkward JavaScript keyword semantics change. These runes will be a tool that will make writing reusable code easier. That's it for the Swelt update. What are your thoughts on Swelt runes? I would love to hear it in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for your time and see you in the next one. David signing off.